Okay, let's talk about accuracy. Accuracy by definition refers to how close your experimental measurements or data are compared to the theoretical and accepted values. Now, this definition is very important to keep in mind because it will help you understand the difference between accuracy and validity as well as reliability. Not only that, once you know this definition, it's quite easy to understand that unless you know the theoretical and the accepted values, you won't be able to assess the accuracy of your results. Sometimes we simply don't have a standard or a set of theoretical and accepted results or data. In these kind of experiments, it's impossible to comment on the accuracy of the experimental results. In general, accuracy depends on a few things. First of all, it depends on the validity of the experiment, that is the method or the procedure. If the procedure is invalid, it will likely produce inaccurate results. We'll talk more about this in a moment. Accuracy of results also depends on the degree of error. This refers to both systematic and random error, and I'll discuss this in a very moment. It also depends on the sensitivity of the equipment that was used to measure the experimental results. So by way of review, errors can be grouped into two different types, systematic and random errors. Systematic errors are the ones that are systemic to the experiment. They are always present no matter which repetition and at what time you've done the experiment. And because they're always present, they should affect every single data point consistently. You should see systematic error affecting every single data point, no matter how you repeat the experiment. And every time it's being affected, you should see that the effect of the systematic error is identical or similar for every single data point, hence consistently. Random error, on the other hand, occur randomly or inconsistently. They only are present sometimes, and they only affect some of the data points and not all of them. So for some data points and some repetitions of the experiment, you may not see the random error. And once you repeat it, you might see that, oh, the random error is affecting the accuracy of your data points. Now, of course, it's impossible for me to give you examples of systematic and random errors without an example of an experiment. So I'll go through the systematic and random errors in more detail as we use the examples that we have used in a moment. Like I've already emphasized before, accuracy of results can only be assessed if we know the theoretical, the true, or the accepted value of the experimental measurements. When you're assessing accuracy, a very common way of doing this is by calculating the percentage error, which is calculated by finding the absolute value of the difference between the experimental value or data and the true value, and dividing this by the true value times about 100 to get to the percentage. Generally speaking, if you arrive at a percentage error of less than 5%, the result is considered as accurate. However, this is a general rule. You should always consider the context of the experiment as well as the results. What I mean by that is in some circumstances, 5% percentage of error may be really, really good, and that might mean your results is very accurate. However, in other circumstances, maybe you're expecting way more accurate results given that maybe let's say your equipment is very sensitive, um, you've done everything you can to minimize the random and systematic errors. In these situations, obtaining a 5% error may be quite substantial. It may mean that your results are actually considered as inaccurate. Now, if you don't know which circumstance or which situation your experiment fits in, then you can use a general rule of less than 5%. But always consider the context of the experiment and the results when you're assessing accuracy of data. Let's go through some examples. So let's say I'm going back to my pendulum experiment where I'm measuring the period of oscillation for every length of pendulum or string that's being used. So for one meter, my experimental value is 2.05, and I've listed the experimental value for the other strings here. For this experiment, I can actually calculate the theoretical or the true values of the oscillation because I can do this by using the equation from before, which is that period is equal to 2 pi times by the square root of length of the string divided by g. I can rearrange this formula. I can plug the value of the length of the string and the accepted value of gravity on the surface of Earth, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, to calculate the theoretical period in seconds for each length. And these are the numbers I arrive at, 2, 2.2, 2.46 and 2.69. So you can see I have a column with experimental results where I've actually obtained and measured myself by doing the experiment. This is your primary data. And I've got a column of theoretical results and these are obtained from calculation using an accepted law or equation. To calculate the percent deviation, I will take the experimental result, which is 2.05, minus the accepted value, which is 2.00, and I'll find the absolute value of the difference. And I'll divide this 
by the value of the theoretical result, which is 2.00 seconds, and I'll times it by 100. By doing this, I'll arrive at 2.5%, which is this number here in the fourth column. And you can do this calculation for every single set of your data. So I've got 0.45% here, 2.0% here, and 1.5% here. Now you can see all of these percentage deviation or error are less than 5%. So I can conclude by saying that all of my experimental data measurements on the second column are considered as accurate, as they are less than 5% deviated away from the theoretical values. Students are often confused between accuracy and validity. This is because despite them having different definitions, they are often affected by similar, if not the same factors. By way of review, validity refers to how well your experiment and procedure addresses the aim and the hypothesis. Whereas accuracy of result refers to how close your experimental values are compared to the theoretical values. The two are closely related because valid results are usually suggesting that they are accurate because valid results not only refer to accuracy, but also imply that the results are reliable, which I'll discuss what these mean in a moment in the section on reliability. Conversely, accurate results also will suggest that the underlying experiment and method is valid. And also the analysis that was used to arrive at the results is also valid. So if you have already concluded that your results are valid, this already means that they are accurate. And if you have accurate results, if this percentage deviation is less than 5%, then that will suggest that the underlying method and the method of analysis are both valid. On the other hand, if your method or procedure is invalid, that means if you have concluded that your method does not appropriately address the aim and test the hypothesis, most likely you will have inaccurate results. Now think about this logically. If your method is not able to address the aim and test the hypothesis, how can it arrive at results that are close to what you expect or the theoretical results? It's very unlikely to. So the bottom line is accuracy and validity are completely different concepts, but they are often confused because they often have implications on one another, as I just explained. So how do we improve accuracy? Because accuracy is fundamentally dependent on the validity of the method and data analysis, you can try to improve the underlying procedure or method and the type of analysis you've used to arrive at your results. You can also improve accuracy by using more sensitive equipment or ways of attaining measurements. A good example of this is when you're measuring the time taken for a projectile to finish its parabolic motion, instead of using a stopwatch, which can be affected by delays in reaction or human error, you could use a video recording and determine the time by analyzing the video frame by frame. Accuracy of results can also be improved by minimizing both systematic and random error. Systematic errors are usually due to inappropriate method or equipment that has not been appropriately calibrated. So think about how you can calibrate the equipment that are used to measure the results in the first place. On the other hand, random errors are harder to eliminate. But one effective method that works for all situations is to repeat the experiment in order to obtain an average value across the board. Because for random errors, sometimes they can overestimate the experimental value, sometimes they can under underestimate the experimental value. So it goes both ways. If we repeat the experiment enough times, we can average the effect or cancel the effect of the over and underestimation, such that the average value is exactly right in the middle between the overestimated and the underestimated values due to the random error. In some cases, when you're trying to identify and determine the relationship between two variables, and this is particularly more relevant in physics experiments, accuracy can be also improved by obtaining more measurements, that is measurements of independent variables, over a wider data range. So using the simple pendulum experiment as an example, instead of measuring a smaller range of string lengths, such as 1, 1.1, and 1.2 meters, we can broaden this length to measure 1, 2, and 3 meters. This is because in some cases, the true relationship between variables is not accurately determined when the independent variable only tested goes over a smaller range. Until we broaden the range of these independent variables, we cannot obtain an accurate relationship between the variables. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, 
and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.